God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather for Mass today, we pray that the Lord will always welcome us home. Even as we celebrate this Feast of St. John, the Com of Campestalo. St. John of Capistrano. Preparing ourselves for these sacred mysteries. How the Lord frees us and welcomes us home in his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. John of Capistrano to comfort your faithful people in tribulation, place us, we pray, under your safe protection and keep your church in everlasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to human beings in other, or other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this I became a minister by the gift of God's grace that was granted me in accord with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring to light for all 
what is the plan of the mystery hidden from ages past in God who created all things so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my savior. With joy will draw water you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully, joyfully from the springs, the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw, you will draw joyfully water joyfully from the springs, the springs of salvation. Of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from, from the, the springs, springs of salvation. Of salvation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. John said to his disciples, be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be prepared for an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants in distribution to distribute the feud allowance at the proper time. Blessed is that servant when his master on arrival finds him doing so. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the maid men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day, in an unknown hour, and will punish the servant severely and assign him to a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparation nor act in accordance with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, 
but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall be only beaten lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much. Still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Many of you may remember the movie about the swallows of Capistrano. It is part of the story of St. John of Capistrano that he brought the Lord's comfort in, in a, a, a time of great tribulation, faithfulness and comfort he, I think, can be a beautiful saint for us to pray to today. The swallow part of the story is one that is just a sign. It's a sign that seems to be there every spring when the swallows return, almost as if they have a clock. To this day, people re still look for the swallows to return to Capistrano. In our pandemic, I couldn't help but pray about the homecoming we all look for. Those swallows leave every year and go somewhere down in Argentina, but they come back. And I found myself today praying about the comeback when our pews will be full again. And perhaps to pray that through our own ordeal, faithfulness and comfort and doing the Lord's will by taking care of one another will result in that great homecoming. St. John of Capistrano, keep us faithful and pray for us in our tribulation. Prudent stewards of what God has given, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That God's people may be faithful in sharing food with the hungry, we pray. That ministers and preachers may be faithful in teaching the wisdom of Christ, we pray. That government officials may be faithful in service to the communities they lead, we pray that the leaders of businesses and finance may be faithful to the demands of justice and peace, we pray. That medical professionals and caregivers may be faithful to the call of the sick and know the prayers of us all, we pray. For an end to the pandemic, for solutions that will help people to return to a normal way of life, we pray. That our beloved dead may experience the fullness of God in eternity, we pray. Head of our household, you entrust your servants with the care of the family you gather. Make us eager stewards of those you treasure that nourished in spirit and body we may together do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself when he shared in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with these gifts we offer you in sacrifice with humble and with contrite hearts. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and archangels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, Walter Hurley, our Bishop Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, St. John of Capistrano, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death and resurrection brought life to the world by your holy body and blood. Free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and desire to receive you. For those who cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into their hearts. For they embrace you as if you are already there and have united themselves to you. Never permit any of us to be separated from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life with him.
the body of Christ. 